Thank you, sir, for, uh, for this opportunity to speak on the National Anti-Doping Bill 2022. I appreciate the Minister's attempt to deal strictly with the dangerous problem of doping and to comply with the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization's International Convention against doping in sport. This is also timely since our country is also performing spectacularly at the Commonwealth Games. I would like to begin by congratulating the Indian contingent for their performance thus far and wishing them luck for the rest of the Games. According to the latest World Anti-Doping Agency WADA report released in 2021, India ranks third in doping and has 152 cases across disciplines, only marginally below leaders Russia 167 and Italy 157. Just last week, some of our Commonwealth Games candidates were disqualified after failing routine tests for performance enhancing drugs. We were all witness to the scandal in another country where athletes were taking these drugs with state sanction and administrative support. It is important that Indian sportspersons do not fall prey to the lure of easy wins and engage in dishonest behavior. The administrative setup of sport in the country should work to identify and nurture talent fairly and provide an environment of encouragement and guidance so young play players are not led astray. The ministry's sports administrative bodies, coaches, former players and seniors all have a responsibility towards new players in this regard. For example, even before the present Commonwealth Games, members of women's cricket team were awaiting visas till the last minute. Such administrative kinks should be ironed out with domestic bodies working in tandem with the international bodies. I agree with the concerns raised by the fellow members. The bill does not make a sufficient distinction between minors and majors and this should be addressed in the rules so as to protect impressionable minors. The panels mentioned in the bill should be independent and a change must be made to separate the disciplinary panel and the appeal panel as well as to give the disciplinary and hearing panels protection from arbitrary removal by the ministry. While the government has attempted to take a holistic view of the problem and by countering it from multiple fronts via the bill, the socio-economic reasons for doping have been overlooked. Research shows that one of the major reasons behind doping is a sportsperson's desperation to register significant performances. Such performances determine the quality of the government jobs and incentives they receive after their career in sports and therefore fuel an intense desperation to register quick wins in the shortest time possible. A limited professional shelf life combined with the unrelated and unsatisfactory desk jobs that await them post their professional careers has always been a worry for our sportspersons. The government thus must change their perspective on, perspective on the careers of our athletes. Provisions must be made for better monetary support during training and career periods as well as for the post-retirement options to them in order to curtail their desperation. Our sportsperson must be humanized. They cannot be looked at wins dispensing vending machines. Their needs and aspirations must be given the time and space they need as they strive to take our country to new heights each day. I would also like to point out that there must be provisions to prevent the harassment of players. While carrying, out raids, uh, 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 while carrying out raids is necessary, NADA should ensure that appropriate safeguards may be implemented to protect the rights of athletes and to address the issue of privacy. This is also a need to lay down their clear guidelines on what constitutes the anti-doping rule violation. I would also insist that more dope testing laboratories should be opened, preferably at least one lab in each state to ensure better accessibility and speedy test results. In Bengal, we have a long history of encouraging sports and sportspersons. Trained in gymnastics and wrestling as a kid, the Nobel laureate, Ramindranath Tagore, 
was a great admirer of Jiu Jitsu and even invited Judo instructors to teach in Shantiniketan. Our football clubs are legendary and just last month a trophy tour for the Doran Cup was launched from Kolkata in the presence of State Minister for Youth Services and Sports. So in conclusion, I would like to commend the Ministry for bringing forward the bill to deal with this dangerous problem and I hope it works both to prevent doping and to support and encouraging promising players. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Mm.